Hi there, welcome. I'm Coach Tanya here with Critical Bench. And this video, just to warn you, is somewhat of, it may come off as a bit of a rant, um, but it's really not. Um, but I am going to be in this video, I am going to give you my review of the food documentary Game Changers. Insert Jaws theme music. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Sit down, buckle up, here we go. Okay, so there is a food documentary that is um, getting a lot of attention right now. It's creating a lot of debate and it's got a lot of people making some very drastic, and what I mean by drastic is not neither good nor bad, just very sudden quick changes based on what they're hearing and seeing in this film. And in case you have been, you know, somewhere in Tibet at the top of a mountain and have not heard of this documentary, it is called Game Changer. And basically it's all about promoting vegan, you know, veganism, but doing a lot of focusing on how it can increase or support like optimal performance and high performance athletes. So I'm gonna back up a little bit and start at the beginning um, with basically that what I will say very honestly is that I pretty much 99% of the time have a problem with food documentaries. All of them. <laughs> Doesn't that make me a horrible person? No, okay, here's the thing. And I, I believe if you watch any of my videos where I talk about food or nutrition or lifestyle, I don't ever pro seriously promote or discount a certain lifestyle or way of eating. That's, that's nothing, that's not what I'm in this industry for. I'm in this industry to get accurate, truthful, unbiased information out there, present opposing viewpoints, um, because what works for someone doesn't always work for the other person. So my problem with game, well, my problem with food documentaries is that they're often so unequivocally biased. It's just, <sighs> insert eye roll, okay? Um, which if, if you want to do a video to promote a certain way of eating or lifestyle because you believe it's very good and has you know great quality, sure, then, then do a, a truthful video about a certain lifestyle, a certain e way of eating and why you support it based on your personal opinion and certainly back it up with any scientific evidence and research that you can find. But you also have got to be prepared to, to showcase or present the other side too. Now, everybody is entitled to their opinion and if you're doing something that works for you and that feels great, then keep doing it. We do not want to fix what is not broken and everybody's entitled to their opinion. I just have a huge problem with science and researchers sort of doing this cherry picking and this very biased, focused perception of something and really presenting it in a way that for a lot of people out there watching it are gonna be hooked and baited and just kind of go with it and put all their trust and faith in what they're seeing and hearing. Um, because not everybody has time to spend hours and hours and hours researching and if someone is sitting out there watching this and wanting to make a change and wanting to feel better, wanting to lose weight, wanting to increase their, their performance in, in um, you know, sport or athleticism, any of that, uh, this could really take them, you know, it, it could be very misleading because it's not entirely true and accurate in how they presented the material. So. My problem with food documentaries is that they're largely so one-sided and so biased, okay? They're ne they're rarely have I, have I watched one that equally presents both sides with scientifically researched, proven data, okay? Um, because a true documentary presents evidence from both sides. Now I have got, you're gonna see me looking down here, I have got pages and pages of notes because um, as I was watching the documentary, I was typing. Um, <laughs> and I'm actually not going to talk about everything specifically that I had a problem with in this video because this video would go on for hours, but I just kind of picked, I just picked a few because I have a problem with all of it. So I picked a couple to discuss here. Well, and number one, um, you know, when you have, the, have names like Arnold Schwarzenegger and James Cameron, you've got some big power. 
behind behind you so if you're an athlete or you know you aspire to look or feel and be a certain way and you you know you see Arnold Schwarzenegger's name on a food documentary chances are you're gonna watch it and you're going to believe it okay and James Cameron okay he directed Titanic and he did a lot of research before doing that movie so right off the bat there is you know there's two names that kind of get you in to you know sit down and actually watch it um, the documentary certainly over delivers on shock, the shock factor value. They really nailed that. Um, and that's pretty much where my appreciation for the documentary ends. You did a fabulous job on the shock factor. I applaud you on that, but that's the end of my appreciation and respect for what was presented in the video. Um, before I go any further, I am not any of the following. I am not a vegan. I am not vegetarian. I am not paleo, I am not keto, I am not raw food, I am not gluten free, I am not lacto ovo vegetarian, I am, I eat food. I eat all foods except the ones that when I eat them do not make me feel good. Because whatever works for you is going to be different than what works for another person. And that means that essentially for me, my philosophy or my belief, my mindset is, you know, in, in, in what I do with my coaching and how I work with clients is a, yeah, we do not want to fix what isn't broken. But ultimately, if you can wake up every day, having had a restful sleep, restful quality sleep, and you have energy to not only get through your day, but to function, to meet the demands that life, work, career, all of that places on you. And at the end of the day, still have energy to enjoy your day, to maybe, you know, to get some exercise. Just if you can meet the demands of your day without feeling completely tired, broken, beaten down, exhausted, no energy, sick all the time, then what you're doing is largely working for you. Now, that's not to say you're not gonna have days where you're completely exhausted and beat down, and that's called life and stress, and it's, it's, this, it's this ebb and ebb and flow of things. But ultimately, you know if something's working or not working. And if it's not working, then great, let's step back, let's evaluate, let's take a look at what can possibly be changed. And sometimes it doesn't mean completely altering your eating to going from someone that eats, you know, uh, everything to going completely vegan it might not you might you probably don't need something that extreme unless it's something you want to do and that's a different story all right so briefly my issues with the film are is it's certainly not exclusively a focus on endurance athletes but they they certainly um they certainly talked a lot about that at the at the very beginning anyways and that was initially i was i was like well my goodness they're talking about carbohydrates and you know, plants being a good source of carbohydrates and they're, they're talking about endurance athletes. Well, if you, you know, if you're going to be running for like however many days that guy ran, you're going to need fuel, <laughs> quick fuel. All right. Which brings me to my next point. And I thought this was, as far as I know, this, this has been put to rest years ago. Like this is biblical almost in like how old this argument is, but protein as fuel, Um, that was long answered and put to rest. So the, to me, guys, really stretching to make a point. So right there, you lost my respect because you're bringing up something that is uh, really, yeah. Protein consumption, like protein is not a fuel for endurance athletes. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. I, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I just have to stop there um, because protein consumption by athletes is to sustain lean body mass and to help with their recovery. And again, that is that is something that's sort of been known for a very, very, very long time. See the T-Rex? Yeah, that's how long we've known that. Okay, maybe not. Now I'm stretching. Anyways. Um, next, the next one, I got so much here. Okay, so I'm trying and I'm just, okay. Oh, here, here was one. If you eat too much protein, you will deplete muscle glycogen. Another eye roll. <laughs> um, really, this, uh, this only becomes um, an element of concern if you are really strict keto, so that's you're adhering to the 20% or less uh, carb intake, okay? And when, um, when, when you're, if, if that is you, 
um, that that is definitely a potential risk. So um, you know you can yes we can get protein the protein we need from plants absolutely they're not lying about that the way they are presenting it is a bit skewed um, because they're saying that you know you, we can get all the protein we need from plants and that that protein source is better but actually it's not all right you can get enough protein pl um, from plant-based sources but you really had better be very diligent and very disciplined in tracking and um, you know basically doing the math and making making sure you're meeting your protein requirements because you're going to need more total protein and you're going to need a huge variety of plants to get all of the protein that you need and what why I'm saying that is because um, plant-based sources you know are, are lacking in essential amino acids so you need to eat a variety of plant-based proteins to make sure you're getting them because um, as the name suggests they are essential essential amino acids you must have them and you can't get them from just one or two types of plant-based proteins you need to be eating a gamut of plant-based proteins to get enough and make sure you're getting them all so yes they're not lying but they certainly skipped some other information you need to make it very clear that in order to get enough protein from plant-based sources you gotta eat a lot a lot that's a lot of chewing my friends a lot of chewing um, oh this one made me laugh out loud when they talked about gladiators now the reason that one stuck out to me is because I I love the whole Roman history I'm, I'm a history buff and I love that era so when I was listening and they were talking about how gladiators were vegan based and that was based on um, their analysis of bone tissue from bones that were exhumed I, I laughed out loud for a couple reasons um, I, I've never exhumed bones okay I have no desire to but here's a few things I do know about that era um, gladiators were slaves okay it's not like you didn't necessarily sign up for the job you were a slave and this this was what you did it was entertainment and also gladiators you know it, <laughs> they were probably they, they would have been fed what they were given okay and they would have been fed what was available in that area in which they live now they talked about I can't uh, start with an E the area where those bones were exhumed from so that was one area okay but there was there is some research on you know if they were to focus on other areas as well are they going to find the same nitrogen readings in bones of gladiators exhumed from other areas where maybe meat uh, like animal based protein sources were a little higher a little more plentiful or they were fed that because you have to remember in those days nobody was going to Publix and shopping you couldn't walk in a building and have access to everything you wanted the term eating local couldn't have been more true so yeah I have a problem with that one too and unfortunately there's no gladiators around today to ask but um, I do think focusing on bones exhumed in one area and making that statement is pretty irresponsible moving right along um, oh I'm not going to even attempt to say this gentleman's last name, but the strong man, Patrick, yeah, super, super strong guy. No one's going to argue with that. But what I want to know is, okay, when, when he was talking, at one point in time, he was talking about having switched to a vegan diet. So before that, how was he building all that muscle? Because he didn't start out eating vegan. He certainly didn't make any claims or statements that he was eating vegan as a young child or even as a teen or even as a young adult. All I remember him saying was that he switched to the vegan diet and that when he did this, he added 25 kilograms of weight. Okay. That is a freaking lot of weight. A lot of weight. Like, wow. And to do that on a plant-based diet, Uh, I don't know <laughs> it seems very very far reaching I have a hard time believing that I have a hard time believing he added 25 kilograms of weight 
on strictly a plant-based diet. Now, however, I know nothing about his training. Um, we know nothing about his genetics. I mean, there's other factors that can certainly play a role in that. Um, and what, you know, what strongman organization is he competing in? That I don't know because like bodybuilding and other sports, there are organizations that drug test and there are some that don't. Again, I'm not making any judgments. I'm not making any assumptions. My point is I find it very, very hard to swallow that and just accept that switching to plant-based, he gained 25 kilograms of weight. Just like, you know. okay. But again, these are my opinions, this is my review, this is what jumped out at me, these are the things I'm questioning, and these are a lot of the reasons why. I mean, if somebody could have stepped in there and provided all the other missing information, maybe my opinion would be different, and maybe it would be the same. Um, so let's go on to more, more athletes, because they really did, they really wanted to focus on athletes, and it's sure, it certainly felt to me like they were really promoting, you know, eat plant-based protein, switch to a vegan diet, and you're going to build muscle and get buff and be strong, and, hmm, all right. Um, the vegan bodybuilder, I actually did go to his IG and, and look through it, and, you know, yes, impressive young man, impressive physique, uh, looks like a lot of great you know food photos and you know he's sharing with the world what he's eating um, what else what else is he doing again what's the training what are his genetics when did he switch to vegan has he been vegan his whole life did he actually build that body strictly on a vegan diet based on an entire lifetime of how he's been eating um, you know was he always vegan when did he when did he switch to vegan I want to know that and when he did switch, how much growth and mass was there before he made that switch? Do you, you hear what I'm saying? Like it's very, it's very, it'd be very easy for me to spend the next two years working my butt off, getting back in that stage physique that I used to have many eons ago and build that muscle and that mass and then do a switch to a vegan diet and probably do a decent job figuring out just exactly how much protein I needed, where I was going to get all those sources, how I was going to get all those essential amino acids, how I was going to feed pre-workout, post-workout for recovery, and sustain, sustain what I have. I don't think it would be easy. I actually think I would be one of the most miserable people on the planet. <laughs> but um, yeah, so for the vegan bodybuilder, when did he make the switch? What, what did he look like before that? How much growth had occurred before that? What was the growth after? What else, is he, what else is he doing? They're fair questions, and they were questions not answered by the film. Again, that's one of my problems, okay? Ah, let's see. Oh, um, just bar, you know, the, uh, an umbrella, an umbrella statement here. It was, to me, again, my opinion, it was clear it was a clear and unequivocal bias in the athletes that they used to make what, in my opinion, is an incredibly weak point. Okay, they really cherry-picked here, and they did not give all of the facts. They didn't even come close to giving all of the facts, okay? Can athletes perform at a high level on a vegan diet? Absolutely. Yes, I said it. Athletes, high-performance athletes can perform at a high level while being on a vegan diet at a high level, but superior athleticism, like superior platinum level athleticism, I don't know. I don't know. Because they, the evidence they provided was not complete. It was incomplete and it was one-sided. All right, so give me something to compare it to, to prove that to me. Um, and, and here's why this, here's where this one really got me. I'm a huge UFC fan. Love UFC. Been following UFC, oh gosh, since probably 2010. Now in the last couple of years, not as closely because I've done a lot of moving around, couldn't always watch the fights, so it wasn't always, hard, wasn't always easy to follow up on fighters, but I do, I'm a huge fan of the sport. Um, yeah, um, yes, so, 
And I can remember getting really excited and pumped and, and like anxious about the fight between Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz. And I remember when that fight was announced thinking, these are two fighters that are actually unmatched. Not saying, okay, please just everybody settle down, settle down, okay? What I mean by that is Nate Diaz is known for having really incredible uh, endurance, okay? He's a triathlete as well. He does triathlons. So his cardio, his, his um, yeah, his cardio endurance is really, it's quite outstanding, all right? Conor McGregor, not so much. Okay, Conor McGregor's an Irish fighter, okay? Um, he, he's good in a fight. He's good with his fists, okay? He's, I'm not, I'm not belittling or in any way minimizing Conor's ability to fight. I'm a huge fan of Conor McGregor, but he's like got that street fighter, you know, like tough, tough street fighter um, skill. Um, Nate Diaz is also a master of jiu-jitsu. So if that fight was going at any point, there was going to be a takedown and that fight was moving from standing to on the floor, Diaz had the upper hand. All right. The outcome of the fight has nothing to do with who or who did not eat steak. Come on, are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me? Like this is, <laughs> Diaz didn't win because he didn't eat meat. He won because the way he fought and who his opponent was, he was just the guy that was gonna win. If the fight went the way it did, it went to the floor, boom, it, that, it was over. As soon as it went down, I was like, well, that's, you know, Connor doesn't have that same level of training in that area as Diaz did. It had nothing to do with steak. It had nothing to do with being a vegan. You know, being a vegan apparently works for, for Nate Diaz and he's, you know, I mean, to look at him, yes, he's athletic, he's healthy, he's strong. But he doesn't, he didn't win that fight, that particular fight, because he doesn't eat meat. Please. Please. All right. Okay, I need to calm down. I'm getting a little heated. <laughs> All right. The whole burrito bias again. Oh, seriously, you've got to be kidding me. Okay. The bottom line is the meat burritos would just have more fat in them because meat's gonna contain more fat than vegetables, all right? So initially, right after a meal, if you eat a meat burrito and they do a blood serum analysis, it's going to show more fat because there's more fat overall in the burrito. It's just biased, it's just biased, biased, biased. And there's way too much scientific research. And again, I'm, I'm not going into that, um, into that here because to talk about all of that and include all the studies that you know I've cited are not going to it's just going to take a lot of boring time at the end of the video um, and I'll come back to that in a minute because there is somewhere I do want to send you if you want to actually read a written an absolutely probably the best written review of this this documentary I'm going to tell you who did that and you can you can get all of the scientific uh, references to support a lot of these things um, but getting back to the scientific research, there's so much that shows us that um, low fat animal sources, so your chicken breast, turkey, and even lean beef, doesn't have that shockingly scary an effect as what they show you in the movie. Again, the movie, the document documentary, was set up with tremendous shock factor value. It was designed to get an initial, whoa, response from its audience, and it did. But what they're presenting and how they're presenting it is, okay, insert a little me. Now, lastly, I get the last, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna skip to one final thing that I had, a, I took issue with that just really rubbed me the wrong way when I was watching this documentary, and that is, the individual that they decided to use as sort of the spokesperson or the narrator for the movie, and that's James Wilkes. Now, I, I like this guy, I really do, but come on, like, come on. So during, you had, knee, you had an injury, you had knee surgery, so during your six months recovery from knee surgery, you actually studied the amount, studied and read the amount of research that you claim to be something of an expert 
in this. And I mean, that's, yeah. I, I, hmm. Um, the other thing is that James Wilkes, you know, he switched to being a vegan in 2011. So what was he eating before that to build the physique that he has? Um, what, you know, how, how did switching to being vegan in 2011 contribute to his level of athleticism today? And don't even bring up the ropes thing because I think that, I think that's largely editing and not at all accurate. I'm just going to say it. I, I, I have a really hard incredibly difficult time believing that but hey never say never right um now i i do want to acknowledge i do i want to acknowledge james wilkes the amount of time he did spend looking into this and i mean truly the gentleman obviously had an interest he's obviously very much invested in taking care of his body and doing the very best things for his body and i will never ever dismiss anybody for that i think that's fantastic um but man, a thousand hours of reading is, that's, I mean, that's, that's a lot of time, 24 hour days, even in six months. That's a big statement. That's a big statement to make. Um, like how is that even humanly possible? Gosh, I wish I had that much time to read. Whew. Hmm. Is it plausible? Is it at all possible that there were other people doing some of the reading research for him and he just made a really great candidate? for them to make this documentary and present it the way that they wanted to. I mean, he was an excellent candidate to be the narrator for it based on how they made this film and how it's put out there, okay? So, you know, just a few questions I have about that. So, if you haven't watched the documentary, you really need to. Um, I went into this with an open mind. I really did. I was in there. I mean, I heard the whole Kai Green's going vegan. Now Kai Green has a book. Now there's this Game Changers uh, documentary. So I watched it once again, incredibly disappointed. But I went into it with an open mind, hoping to watch a video that simply explored the potential of, of and giving really great scientific based examples of high level vegan athletes. That's, I didn't go into it looking to not like it. I went into it. Now I have friends who are vegan and we don't have arguments about it, okay? But they also don't come to me with a bunch of BS and crap, okay? Um, so I went into it open-minded and I was hoping to see something that was a lot more upfront, no masks, no smoke and mirrors, not so biased, more truthful, um, in, in the evidence that was presented and how it was presented. And I didn't get that at all from this documentary, not at all. Um, I was also hoping at the end of the movie, I was thinking, well, at least maybe somebody, maybe somebody is going to say, you know, that to do this, like reinforcing and hitting home the point that to be this high level vegan athlete you and to sustain it, it's going to take a lot more work. It's going to take a lot more discipline and it's going to take incredible attention to your diet to make sure that your nutritional requirements are met. Cause again, we're not just talking about the general population. We're talking about high performance athletes, which is what they focus their documentary on. Okay. Let's be real. They, let's be honest. They were focusing on, high level athletes and them being vegan and being able to perform at these superior levels and sustain all of that. But they never really shared with the audience just how difficult and challenging that is going to be. Um, so I give this documentary two thumbs down. If I had more thumbs, I'd give it all my thumbs down seriously, because what we have again is another documentary making a claim about a certain type of diet and a way of eating that is going to cure anything and everything, including your erections. Notice I didn't talk about that, but I can't help but bring it up. Okay. Look folks, if you want to be vegan or vegetarian, I have no problem with that. I, I, I really don't. Um, 
there's just so much flawed there's so much in this documentary that's flawed. It's only to, going to create more uncertainty questions in an industry that's already saturated with a lot of crap and a lot of biased misinformation, okay? I think including, you know, honestly, high amounts of plants into your diet is ideal. We need them. We, we need the, the micronutrients. We, we need the fiber. They are good for you, okay? They are better than a lot of other lower nutrition, uh, foods of nu lower nutritional value. And they're necessary. I mean, we need plants for optimal nutrition, for health, for wellness, and yes, for our performance as well. But please do not take your belief, and this is more directed to the people that were behind and involved in this movie, don't take your beliefs and opinions and promote it without presenting the actual facts from both sides. That's a huge irresponsibility. If you're in the health, wellness, and fit fitness industry, I'm not going to, I am never going to dismiss your opinion or tell you you're wrong. I can agree to disagree with you. I will hear and listen to your opinion. I will respect you for sharing your opinion honestly with me. But what I don't respect is when you take your opinion and you promote it as fact, is when you promote it as evidence and when you don't show both sides. That I have a huge issue and problem with. In, you know, in a time when health and wellness is a huge big topic, most of the people in this world are trying to do the very best thing for themselves and for their families. Not to mention we're also dealing with uh, a time with social media and visual images and we've got young boys and girls with you know body image issues and and you know there's so much going on it is completely irresponsible and it is wrong to present something and just say this is it this is the way to do it if you do this you're going to be beautiful you're going to be healthy you're going to be strong you can be a high level olympic level athlete and not present all of the facts not present all of the science so for those of you out there that you know do like to watch documentaries and do like food documentaries and I do I watch them all <laughs> um, what I'm gonna ask you is to just take a step back and ask a couple questions at the end of the documentary whether you liked it or not did the documentary present an unbiased did, did it make an unbiased presentation of the topic and did it present scientifically based research, proven evidence to support both sides? And in the event that the evidence did not support their opinion, what they believed in, do they acknowledge it? Do they include enough variety from different generations, populations, socioeconomic classes to give a really clear and truthful um, presentation? Game Changers did not. It did not. And I think what I think that uh, well, I just think it was very irresponsible. I don't have a problem with being vegan. I don't have a problem with any any way anybody wants to eat, and I don't have a problem with what it, what other people believe in and what feels good for them. You know, um, that's not it. It's just please, if you're if you're a scientist, if you're a health professional, if you're an athlete and you're involved in something like this, make sure that what's being presented is truthful and accurate and unbiased so people can make the decision best for them. <sighs> That's it. <laughs> That's all I have to say about it. I thank you very much for sitting with me through this and you know, hearing my, I guess, quasi rant. Um, again, I am very disappointed in the film. I think it's seriously flawed. If you want to read an excellent review, I mean, hands down, the best review I've yet read or heard about Game Changers, you want to check out BioLane. Okay, that's Dr. Lane Norton. He also watched the film. He did a complete write-up reviewing, and he, he hit some of the point. He hit a lot of these points that I talked about, but in greater detail, he's got the scientific references for you to follow up and, and check up on. He did an absolutely intensive fine tooth comb review of it. It is one of the best documentary reviews I've ever read. So please go check that out if you want to learn more, read more. Um, definitely, definitely do that as well because he, again, it's not a one side of what he wrote was very factual. He's not promoting, supporting, discounting anything. He's just giving it to you straight, which is what I wanted to do here in my little, my little YouTube video. Um, I just, I hope that you're doing what's best for you and I hope you're living a life of health and wellness and, and joy. And if you aren't, 
um, and you think that switching your nutrition can have an impact on that, then by all means do, but make a decision best for you based on the truth, based on the facts, all right? Whether that's vegan, paleo, keto, I don't know. I don't know what works for you. You do. And if you're not sure, then you ask somebody who can actually help you truthfully, <laughs> who can give you scientific based evidence to help make that decision. All right. So thanks again for watching. Hey, if you haven't done so already, please um, click that notification and subscription button to check out all of our fantastic videos we have. And please down below, check the pinned comment. You want to click on that pinned comment for a free gift for sitting here and listening to me ramble on. So make sure you do that, click it, enter your email, you're gonna get a free gift right away. Thanks again for watching. And um, yeah, I look forward to, I actually look forward, I, I'm actually waiting for somebody to do another food documentary so I can review it because I'm certain one of these days someone's gonna do one and it's gonna wow me with just how awesome it is. But until then, no, just hasn't happened yet. <laughs> okay, please take care, take care of yourself. Have a wonderful day, talk to you soon.